you guys, welcome to the cellar. I'm Peter Normadia, aka the Film Boss, and today I wanted to do a tutorial for Premiere Pro on how to organize interview material to get you the best possible video. Um, it, let's face it, interviews can be a daunting task. Um, you take these interviews with these people, you have no idea what they're going to say, you have no idea what the content's going to be, you try to lead the questions, but you don't know if you're going to get a good response, what kind of personality these people are going to have. So it can be quite a task when you finally get some interviews in, especially on a multi-interview project, and you're trying to put together a story from all of these topics. And it involves a lot of trial and error. And the most important thing when you're doing something with trial and error is to organize properly so you can have the best ability to look at what you have and get the best possible story out of that content. So let's take a look. So what we have here is a finished file that I did for a video that was built around interviews. It was for the Jar of Hope Foundation. It's a great foundation. If you guys want to check out the video, it'll be in a link below uh, and definitely support this organization. But it was something that I did where I was going to take a bunch of interviews and I had to organize them afterwards because I wasn't sure of what content I was going to get when I did this. And this is the best way to approach that so you have an organized file that you can continue to edit, re-edit, and really cut down until you get the proper story that you're looking for. So the first thing I did was I pulled in all my footage and I organized everything that I had. So I like to start with three major folders in my project window. The first being assets, which basically my graphics, my music, any stills, titles, and this can go on and on and on depending on what kind of project it is. But I basically throw all types of assets that I'm using for the project in there, logos, things of that nature. Uh, the next is my FTG folder is my footage. Um, and my footage is organized always by date and then maybe some little note about what it was. These are all basically interviews or B-roll uh, and when it was shot. And that's so I can easily match back to my finder window and find out exactly where a project was when I'm looking for it. As you can see in my finder window here, in Jar of Hope, right over here, I have the same thing right here in organization. So it matches, and it's very easy for me to refer back to uh, anything that I have in there. So now that I have my project window kind of set up, the next folder is my SEQ, which is my sequences. So in my sequences, the one thing I like to do as you move forward with a project is to have an archive folder. And in that archive folder, what I'll do is I'll randomly copy sequences, which is very easy to do. It's actually shift, command, and question mark. And all you have to do, and that will give you a copied sequence exactly. And what that does is that makes it easy to archive. So if you come over here and you see, I have this whole thing broken down here, or I have one over here um, all laid out. And these are sequences that before I start to cut them up and take them, I will go in here in my archive, I will duplicate it so I have a copy of it fully before I made any type of significant cuts. And it's just a good way to keep organized on as you move forward in case you ever need to backtrack. The next most important thing is actually creating my sequences. So the first thing I'll do in an interview is I'll go in and I'm going to have usually because I record my audio separate. Uh, if you don't, you can skip this step. But normally what I'll have is I'll have my video and I'll have my audio. And then what I'll do is in Premiere Pro, I'll select the corresponding video so I know that this file right here, which is the dad, is also equivalent to this file here. So these two are the exact same file. Um, this is the sound and this is the video. Then really quickly, I'm going to go and um, merge the clips. Wow. And then over here, you're going to get some different kinds of um, options. I like to label it not by the clip name. By this point, we're making a new file, so I will say interview dad tutorial merged. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to synchronize by audio. It can give you an idea to select the track that you have. Track one is fine for me. Um, and these are just some different options if you want to use audio time code or remove the audio from the other clip that you're putting in so you'll only that. I don't like to do that. I like to have all my audio in the file and I'll show you why in a second. So what I'll do is I'll click OK and it's going to give me a file that says merged as you can see here. And what I'm going to do with this file now is once I have this here, as you can see it's down here, I'm going to pull this into my merge folder. And then I'm going to drag this down here to create a new sequence. And bang, as you can see, I have all my audio files. This right here, well, let me click these two right here. Those are my original audio files that are in camera, and these are the external recordo, the recording sounds. And now what I have here 
speak because I have my entire interview uh, that we shot. Okay. Now, the good thing about this is this is where I really think the most important process occurs here. Most people, when they take an interview, what they'll do now is they're going to go through and they're going to cut different sections out and they're going to take the best parts of the interview that they think they need. I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Um, what I like to do is I like to go through and I'll listen to the first thing that's said, maybe the first question, and let's say that we were talking about um, his son Brandon, uh, Brandon's life. And what I'll do here is I'm going to press M for to create a marker. Then I'm going to double click that marker and I'm going to write Brandon's life story. And I'm going to go to the duration and I'm going to just drag it so it's open. It doesn't matter what length it is now because I can always pull the uh, handles once it's on the sequence. From here, I'm going to then color code my marker. Now the way I like to use color is I like to use it based on either one of two things. I can either use it to organize my file so that certain topics are color coded so you can easily refer to them. Or the second way, which is what I usually do and prefer, especially when I'm doing something where it's an emotional interview like this, is I use my um, markers for emotion. So if this is a highly emotional uh, topic or an answer, I'm going to give it a red. If it's a little bit less emotional, I'm going to go with a less brighter color. And, you know, you can kind of figure it out as you go. But red, to me, is always the key where I know, hey, this is a key emotional moment, and I'm probably going to want to put this in the final cut. And then I'm going to click that, and I'm going to hit OK. And what you see now here is you're going to have handles. And as you pull this over and you can pull it out, you can see that we covered now the entire stuff. And I can easily refer to this as the topic. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this for the entire interview. And what you're going to wind up with is something like this. And then as you can see here, this initial interview here, this uh, part over here about Brandon's dreams. These are the two parts that I know were, were quite emotional and when he was speaking. So I know I wanted to use these. And the other topics I... You know, orange being the next brightest and so forth and down as I kind of uh, cut them down that way. And then what I'll do is, as you can see here, we have little marks here. I will just create cuts real quick using the H key or whatever key you have on your keyboard shortcuts to make a full cut. And then I can just grab this file, which I'll actually like to do is hold shift and option so I can select exactly which ones I want. And I will copy and then I'm going to go into my sequences and I'm going to have what I call my assembly main file. And my assembly main file is where I'm going to, as you can see, there's, let me just zoom in here, there are little cuts and pieces. And actually, if I zoom back out, this right here, these two, uh, video two and video three, that's usually all my B-roll. Video one is where I have all my interview lined up. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna go through and topic by topic, I'm going to put each one in. And as you can see here, we had interviewed the dad um, multiple times, um, multiple times. We interviewed the mom, and you can see I cut out the same way I did with her as well. Then I went back, and there was also an interview with um, Mr. Phone, and I had just the two red parts because those are the only two parts I knew I was going to use. And then James, who kind of carried the interview, him I didn't actually have to go through and cut because I knew exactly what I was taking out of this interview prior. But it's still good practice to go through. As you can see, I didn't delete anything. I literally just cut and pasted. So back to my assembly. In my assembly file, I now will go through and I will create the interview assembly first using all the parts in the interview, taking clips, going back and forth on topics until I find my proper story. Once I found my proper story and my kind of flow, then I'm going to go through and add in the B-roll. You can see here I have a nested sequence that says assembly here. And what that is actually is my assembly of Brandon. This is actually Brandon himself. And what I did here for this particular interview is I actually cut all the B-roll we shot um, in order um, as we shot it, just so I had something to refer to. Because I wasn't sure which parts I was going to use. What that helps me do is, I then am able to pull in a nested sequence. So if you go here, and you reveal it in the project, you see here, I have an entire sequence. So if I wanted to go down, well I can't pull it into the same file, but if I wanted to pull this in here, as you can see, I have an entire nested sequence here that I can always refer to and use. And that makes it sometimes easier if you're going back to make more, multiple cuts, or more importantly, for color correction. Um, that was obviously shot differently than the interview, so I knew that the color correction would be slightly different. So having it in one file that I can always double click on and see where it is and then color correct everything together makes it a little bit easier at times. Um, and then once I'm all done here, as you can see, these top lines here are just titles and graphics we've used uh, that we built in after at the thing. And then my final thing is I will take this assembly main file and I will drag it to create a sequence one more time. 
and I will come up with my assembly final file, which is basically the same thing with just any adjustment layers I need. If you're adding in neat video, if you're adding in, I think at this time we added a little color correction uh, or grade and so forth and so on. And that just allows you to kind of, um, again, have the process in order so that you can make changes on the interview without having the color correction laying over top to slow things that's uh, to slow things down and so forth and so on but the most important thing to me is this right here and the reason being is one last time these topics you never know when you're gonna have to go back as you're putting your story together things change you know you may not think something's very important when you first go through the b-roll cuts I'm, I'm sorry the interview cuts but then when you get to the sequence and you start putting a story together you're like oh what did they say about this again or what was that and instead of having to go in and find the file in your project folder you now have it all laid out by topic to easily refer to. The other good thing about this is I can see by the topics that are used what they were talking about. Then I can go into each file and I can see again, well, oh, the dad and the mom were both talking about this and both got emotional on this topic, so I know that that's probably a good point to use in the sequence. And then I pull those in, those little cuts of the parts that I like, and then I organize them, and that's kind of how my story gets told. And that's my strategy for knocking out interviews to get the best possible story out of your content. It's great for going back later on and having to make revisions or having to make multiple edits. It really lets you organize your file properly so you get the best chance to tell your story. A um, couple of pointers. If you're doing a multi-camera sequence and you have multi-camera, just follow the same steps except make a multi-camera sequence with that one video one line on. And don't worry about making the cuts between the angles until you actually pull it into your final sequence. Then you can use your multi-cam editor and make the cut so it all matches up once you, once you have your organized sequence. Um, other than that, if you have any questions or comments, definitely let me know below. If you want more videos like this, definitely hit that subscribe button. Look forward to talk to all of you. Look forward to all the criticism. Love it, brother. I'll talk to you soon.